The evolution of mammals has produced some very weird groups over the course of its history, but perhaps none were quite as bizarre as the Calicophyres. This completely extinct lineage is actually part of the same order as modern rhinos, tapirs and horses, but they evolved in a very distinct way, resulting in some of the most unique animals that ever inhabited our world. In this video we'll be exploring one member of this group in particular, the genus Calicotherium, to see just what makes this fascinating mammal so intriguing. Obviously, this animal looked very strange when it was alive, with a general anatomy that appears as though it has been spliced together from a few different creatures. Indeed, this is exactly what the naturalist who first discovered the fossils of this species in 1833 in Germany thought, noting the resemblance of the skeleton to that of a very large, especially muscular horse which possessed particularly elongated forelimbs, it was thought that the claws that were also found in the same locality must have belonged to some sort of big-bodied pangolin or anteater. However, much later in the 1880s, a French paleontologist realised that the claws actually belonged to the same creature as the main body skeleton, which had already been named as Calicotherium gold fussy. So, despite this organism being a member of the hoofed mammal radiation, this discovery showed that the Calicotheres had in fact secondarily modified their hooves into claws. Calicotherium also displays some similarities to primates such as gorillas in the way it presumably walked, as well as the giant ground sloths. This is due to the proportions of its limbs, with arms that were far longer than its legs, meaning that it would have moved about on all fours with a very sloped back, but likely bore most of its weight on its legs or sat down while feeding. Additionally, there are indications that Calicotherium knuckle-walked too, since there are apparently growths of bone present on the upper surfaces of the finger bones suggesting pads were present here in life, and the long claws would have been able to curve backwards, avoiding contact with the ground and making sure they didn't become worn down while walking. All sorts of ideas have been proposed for how these beasts used their claws, as well as what exactly they would have been feeding on. Previously, it had been thought that the claws were used as defensive weapons specifically for fending off predators, or that perhaps they were employed in the unearthing of plant roots which were then eaten. However, analyses of the musculature that would have been present in their arms, in addition to the wear patterns found on the claws and teeth of the mammals, resulted in these ideas being discarded, and instead it seems the evidence favours a lifestyle and diet whereby calicotheres would use their claws to pull tree branches towards them, and then strip the leaves, twigs and bark off for consumption. There are also adaptations in the hips and back legs that are suited to holding up a lot of weight, suggesting that calicotherium would have sat down for a lot of the time while it was eating. More support for this behaviour was identified in the overall anatomy of the teeth too, which possess low crowns and resemble the shape of other known leaf-eating mammals. It's also worth noting that the name of this organism actually comes from the shape of its teeth, which were thought to look like pebbles, hence the name Calicotherium meaning pebble beast. Another fascinating adaptation of the dentition that occurred in these animals was the loss of the front teeth in the upper jaw when they approached sexual maturity. This means that calicotheres possibly may have had prehensile tongues, similar to that of a giraffe perhaps, which were then mostly used in the stripping of leaves, instead of the teeth, in addition to what must have been strongly muscled lips and tough gums. As far as the predation of calicotherium goes, it doesn't seem as though such a big-bodied animal would have had much to worry about during the time it lived, though it would have coexisted with carnivores such as the bear dogs, Amphicyon, leading some to suggest they potentially may have posed a threat to the beasts. The evolutionary history that Calicotherium is a part of is a truly fascinating record of paleobiogeography and adaptation stretching back almost 50 million years, and only ending a relatively very short time ago. The earliest members of this lineage are known from rocks dating back to the early and middle Eocene epoch of both Asia and North America. However, by the end of the middle Eocene, these animals had actually all disappeared from America, only continuing to exist in Asia. Over time, various species then spread further across the prehistoric lands, entering into Europe, with the lineage eventually giving rise to Calicotherium itself, which was incredibly widespread throughout Asia, Europe and Africa by about 23 million years ago. It was actually around the same time that the Calicotheres managed to move back into North America, with unique species such as the Miocene Age Meropus and Tylocephalonyx being found in this region. Tylocephalonyx is an especially weird calicothere, which I bet you didn't think was even possible, as it possessed a dome-like skull similar to those seen in pachycephalosaur dinosaurs. Another video dedicated to this taxon alone would be needed to do justice to this strange mammal, so I won't say too much about it here. 
Anyway, the calico fears disappeared from North America once again by the end of the Middle Miocene, but in Africa and Asia the lineage managed to hold out for a bit longer, with the last known member of the group dying out in Asia about 780,000 years ago. The fact that calicotheres had survived in Africa until within the last few million years has also led to the suggestion that these animals may be the inspiration for the Nandi bear, a vicious large carnivorous cryptid claimed to inhabit East Africa that supposedly has a sloping back and high shoulders, with world famous paleoanthropologist Louis Leakey himself proposing that this might be the case. However, since calicotheres were clearly herbivorous, I'm not sure this would be the best explanation. The evolutionary placement of the whole Calicothere grouping is actually a debated topic, since despite it's agreed that they should be placed within the Perissodactyls, the odd toed ungulates which includes rhinos, tapirs and horses, the exact relationships to the other Perissodactyls have been contested. Some studies have found evidence to support a close relationship between Calicotheres and a horse group plus the group containing tapirs and rhinos although most analyses of the animals have resulted in a placement where calicotheres evolved as a subgroup in the main tapir radiation. So, these bizarre gorilla-horse-tapir hybrids would doubtlessly have been an extraordinary thing to witness, and it's honestly pretty sad that they died out. They would have made an incredible addition to the surviving African megafauna. Anyway, thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed learning about these amazing beasts just as much as I did. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.